Good morning, everyone. Welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori, and today I've got my grocery haul for you. And as you can see, I'm under budget. Yay! I'm trying to tone my budget back. I don't need to spend as much as I do most weeks, but this is where we're at. At Target, I spent $5.99. At Kroger, $7.49. I got some fabulous deals there, I'll tell you about. And at Aldi, $22.34. So let's go over what I bought and my meal plan for the week. So we'll get rid of this. <laughs> All right, at Target. Oh, here's some cat food. At Target, I got a Powerade Zero, just one, one dollar. And I purchased some coffee. I got some buttery caramel. I usually get it at Aldi, but I was looking for a different flavor and it was on sale for $4.99. So only really a dollar something more worth it to me. Now Kroger, I got some Crazy Richards 100% natural peanut butter. I got a dozen eggs, these two cheese, two zucchini, and a butter for $7.49. In my mail, I got some coupons. So these cheeses were free. So I got the sharp cheddar and the mozzarella for my lunch. Uh, the eggs, I had a 50 cent off coupon. There was 50 cents off of that and 50 cents off of this and 40 cents off of this. So my total was $7.49, which I thought was a great deal. At Aldi, I got, oh, sorry, I didn't take out the plastic. My breakfast sausage that I always get. I got some hard salami for snacking and on the go. Um, I like that with cheese. I got a fair amount of pork rinds. I'm going to be making breading because today, this week's lunch is chicken parm with zucchini and mushrooms. And breakfast is eggs and sausage. Um, at Aldi, I got some Parmesan, two different kinds. I like to have this on hand and this for the breading. And I got a so, uh, pork kielbasa for dinner a couple nights this week, and I'll make it with some, some stir-fried rice, cauliflower. And I picked up mushrooms to go with the zucchini for my lunch. So that is everything. The chicken is some that I had purchased before at Target, the $5 off. So that was $1.71, and I have two packages of that to make my chicken parmesan. I'll bring you along when I do that, show you how I grind up the pork rinds, blending in the cheese, and how I batter all that. And I'm also making um, some pound cake today. All right, I hope you enjoy. Now what we've got set up here is a dredging station. I'm gonna move you back a little bit. Look at this. This is two eggs and some heavy whipping cream and pepper and some salt is gonna go in here. And that's going to help the pork rinds stick. As you can see, it's kind of thick. Whatever your dredge is, this is what I like to use. It adds a little fat to my chicken. So do the pork rinds, which is nice. Ooh, now I'm throwing egg mixture all over the kitchen. That's my cheese for later. All right. So that's done. This is pork rinds that I stuck into the food processor with some Parmesan cheese. Mmm, it's delicious smelling. And then my pan. So it's gonna go here, here, here. Let's see if I can get you a better view of what we're gonna do here. And my peanut butter needs to come off the counter. All right. And I'm sure you've all dredged before. So I'm gonna to try to keep one hand from getting gross. And then that's gonna go in here, put a little pork rind on it. Dust it off, and that goes on the pan like that for baking. So I'm gonna do one more. I have a lot of chicken here. If it all doesn't get breaded, that's fine. I took out two packages. That might have been a little much. Um, but I figure for lunch, because these are so thin, it'll be two pieces of the chicken with a little cheese and sauce on it. There we go. 
and I'll fill this pan and be right back. All right, everybody's breaded for the week's lunches. What I'm gonna do now is stick them in the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes. When they come out, I'm gonna put some sauce on them, a piece of mozzarella cheese, and bake them again so that all melts. And that will be my chicken parmesan for my lunches. I'll show you when this comes out of the oven. Now for breakfast, I put sausage in a muffin tin. I'm gonna bake it. And then I'm gonna bake in the same size muffin tin eggs. And I'm gonna put the sausage on the bottom, an egg and a piece of cheese melted over the top. And that will be like a breakfast faux sandwich for me this week. I'll have two. So it's two pieces of sausage, two hard boiled, two eggs and a piece of cheese. Um, back here, I'm just cooking up, oops. The two pieces of chicken that um, were left. I'll have that for dinner tonight. And these are super thin chicken breasts. Um, that's why I'm only cooking them in the oven for about 15 minutes. I have my sauce out and ready. And then the cheese for the Parmesan, for the um, chicken farm is out. And then I'm gonna saute the veg. Here is the finished chicken parmesan. It's cooling, so I can cut it up and put it in my serving containers for lunch. And then here are my vegetables. This is zucchini and mushrooms with some of my zesty Italian seasoning I just sauteed and a little bit of olive oil. So that is it. I think this turned out really nicely. Um, it got crispy with the pork rinds, but it's cooling. It's easier to cut up when it's cool. In the oven, I have sausage cooking and eggs, which are both almost ready, and I will get those out as well, and then I'll show you that. What we're going to make is some pound cake, keto pound cake. I found this recipe on Pinterest. And here we go. It's, I'll try to remember to link it at the bottom as well. But it is one and a quarter cups of almond flour, three quarters of a cup of sweetener, one teaspoon of bacon powder, quarter teaspoon salt, four eggs at room temperature, three and a half ounces of cream cheese at room temperature, four tablespoons of butter, room temperature, and a teaspoon of vanilla. Here's one of my little tricks. I didn't take my eggs out, so I have them sitting in warm water. Now I will dump it, dump it out. Let me show you what this looks like. You won't be able to obviously feel the eggs, but you should be able to see when they're room temperature, um, they're pretty thin when I crack it. Like the yolk itself is very watery, and that's because it's at room temperature. Um, the other thing is you want it at room temperature because it will thicken up, make your butter, possibly your cream cheese really stiff, and you won't get that blending that you want. So you, this is super important when you're keto baking that everything is at room temperature if that's what it calls for. So I have, oops, my four eggs with the shell in it. And I will tell you, it only has to sit for maybe... 20 minutes in the warm water. I mean, I make it like hot tap water and it brings these, these eggs right to room temperature. So if you forget, that one's easy. Now what it asks me to do is to cream the cream cheese, the butter, the sweetener, and the vanilla first. So I'll do that. There we go. Now you could do this lemon. You could add some lemon extract to it. I wouldn't add lemon juice. Um, only because the lemon juice would thin it down, but we're going to add these eggs one at a time and incorporate them. So I'll be back again. The last two fell in together, but that's okay. And just like regular baking, you really want to make sure everything gets incorporated almost a little better in this because really when you put this in the oven that's kind of how it's going to be 
Um, I don't know if I need this mixer again. I'm gonna try to do this by hand. This is the one and a quarter cups of almond flour, baking powder, salt. It's all the dry ingredients. Now, just like in regular baking, sugar is considered a wet ingredient because it will dissolve. And then all I'm doing is stirring this together. And I will let this sit for a few minutes just to kind of let everything blend together. Um, it's not as important with almond flour. Almond flour is not going to absorb um, per se. But if you were using like oat fiber or something like that that's absorbent, you definitely want to let it sit and kind of just come to its happy place. The good thing about this kind of baking, which this is also gluten free. And I say that because some folks are confused that gluten free is not always keto, but keto should always be gluten free. All right, I'm going to whip it real quick. Um, like I was saying, keto is um, is gluten free. Gluten is in flours. The gluten is what absorbs the liquids and makes it chewy and all of that. So that is all, you know, gluten. This is definitely gluten free. However, things that are gluten free are not necessarily keto. Um, they use rice flour. There's a lot of flours. Now this is definitely a supposed to be like in a loaf pan, but I wanted to make it in a cake pan. For me, it's just easier to um, portion, to portion out when it's something in this nature and I'm not having to cut it. In the bottom, I just have a piece of parchment paper and that will just help it come out. And then I generously greased this pan. I don't want anything sticking. Now, this is the first time I'm making this recipe. If I like it, I may make it for the holidays and gift to my gluten-free folk. You can use regular sugar if they don't want Bilicanto. If you have, you know, friends that are gluten-free but can have regular sugar. Oops, sorry. And then I'm just gonna like set it and then I'm gonna tap the pan. to get any of the air bubbles out, so hang tight. Okay, you see those little air bubbles that popped up? We just want those out, just like in regular baking. I'm gonna put it in the oven at 350. I don't know how long this is gonna take, but I'm gonna assume about 30 to 45 minutes, but I will let you know when I get back. And here is the finished cake. It looks a little dark on the outside, but it doesn't smell burnt. I think that is from the almond flour toasting. Uh, next time I think I'll cook it lower, maybe on 325, but I am in love. It's bouncy, it's light. It looks delicious. I'm gonna cut it and show you. Okay, so. If you can see the inner, the interior is light and airy and almost like a custardness to it. The outer here, the outer crust, it's not burnt. It is firm, which is good. But this inner is very moist and flavorful. I'm getting a good vanilla flavor. Okay, Alex, get down. Get down. <laughs> You get down. All right, well, I guess we're done. I gotta get the cat off the table. All right, everybody, you have a good one and I will talk to you later. Alex, say bye. Say bye, buddy. Bye.